Hi, I'm Mike Madewell from the Technical Support Department. In this video, we'll be talking about how to install and set up a Soil Click moisture sensor. The Soil Click is a moisture sensor that prevents irrigation when it senses that the soil is too wet. The Soil Click is compatible with Hunter controllers that have normally closed sensor inputs and even with most non-Hunter controllers without sensor inputs. A crucial step in the operation of the soil click is considering exactly where to place the probe. You need to choose an area that is in full sun exposure and that is representative of the irrigation zone that may dry out the quickest. Another consideration is to install the probe within the zone area to be watered last. This is to prevent excess moisture caused by the ongoing watering cycle that would cause the sensor to shut down irrigation. If necessary, Move the wire corresponding to the most representative zone to the last place at the controller so that this zone is the last to be irrigated. When choosing the probe location, keep in mind the maximum distance between the probe and the interface. This should not exceed 1,000 feet or 300 meters using 18 gauge or 1 millimeter direct burial wire. So before installing the sensor into the soil, we have to take the very important step of soaking the sensor to get it hydrated. You want to suspend it in a bucket of water so that the lower two-thirds of the sensor is completely underwater. That will force the water to enter in through the element for proper operation. You will want to soak it for at least 30 minutes. The soil click sensor probe should be placed in the middle of the root zone for the plant type of that area. In turf applications, the probe should be placed in the root zone approximately 6 inches or 15 centimeters deep. Adjust for the actual turf conditions. For shrubs or trees, select a deeper depth that matches the root zone. For new plantings, choose a spot halfway down the root ball adjacent to the native soil. So in reviewing all the area here, we found that this is the sunny side of the yard and this will be a prime spot for consideration of the probe location. So we're ready to install the sensor into the soil. I have my pre-soaked sensor, I've got some waterproof connectors, I've got a couple of pieces of half inch plastic pipe or 12 millimeter to help us insert the sensor into the soil, and I have a small batch of pre-mixed soil and water slurry mixture, and of course the hammer to insert the pipe. Now with the turf application, we're going to go down about six inches. I've put a piece of tape here at the six inch mark and this sensor will end up roughly at the bottom of the six inch depth. So let's go ahead and make our hole. We'll get to the actual root zone and drive in our plastic pipe. To about the six inch mark. We'll carefully remove the soil out with the plug take our slurry mix and we'll pour some slurry mix right down into the hole. This will aid in settling the sensor into its location. Now I'll take this other piece of plastic pipe. I can run the wire through the pipe and out the top end of it and this will help me actually get the sensor pushed all the way down to the six inch spot of the hole. Now that the sensor is installed in the hole, we want to backfill the remaining portion of the cylinder with a little bit of native soil to get it to set up just so. Once the probe has been installed, we can go ahead and connect it to the module. The module of the soil click is installed within 6 feet or 2 meters of the controller, or inside the controller enclosure in the case of a larger controller like the ACC or the i -Corp. If you are going to place the module outside, try to place it away from direct sunlight and sprinkler spray, and away from electrical boxes and sources of electrical interference. So the wires have been installed inside the controller box, and within the wires from the soil click module we have two whites, two grays, and two yellows. Of course the two yellow wires will be connecting to the power source up here, AC1 and AC2, depending on the controller that you're using. The two white wires will reserve for the sensor terminals within the controller. I have two other wires that come in from the field from the probe installed in the soil, 
and I'll leave these two gray wires in the end here to hook up to the two wires going out to the probe. Polarity does not matter on the two gray wires. With the power turned off to the controller, we are going to connect the two yellow wires coming from the module to the 24 VAC power in the controller. Connect the two white wires from the module to a set of sensor terminals, making sure to remove the jumper across the sensor terminals. The white wires are the actual sensor output of the soil click module and are used to either signal the controller or interrupt a common field wire to the valves. Now that we have the soil click module hooked up to the host controller appropriately per model, we can start to talk about programming the soil click module itself. Let's familiarize ourselves with some of the buttons and the icons on the screen. The bars in the display represent the moisture level in the soil. As you can observe from the drops, the fewer the bars, the drier the soil type is. The arrows represent the moisture level at which you want the sensor to shut down irrigation. It is recommended to set the desired moisture level towards the middle, and then you can adjust it up or down as needed. You can use the plus or minus buttons to increase or decrease this setting. The pause button is used if you want to ignore or override the sensor allowing irrigation to occur even when the sensor has already detected the desired moisture level. When you pause or override the soil click sensor, most of the screen disappears and only the pause symbol is displayed. You can press this button again to resume normal operation of the sensor. The measurement button on the left, when pressed, updates the moisture level reading shown on the display. It takes about five seconds for the new reading to be displayed. Normally the sensor updates itself periodically, but this allows an immediate reading to be taken. So when the soil click moisture sensor is properly installed and programmed, it will shut off the irrigation when the moisture level is reached that is set by the user. When this happens, the display will show a crossed out water drop indicating that irrigation has been inhibited because the soil has sufficient moisture. So the soil click sensor is completely installed. We've made all of our selections in the module itself, but as you know, during the installation process, we completely saturated the sensor out in the soil. So because it's going to be completely active right now, it's going to inhibit irrigation. So we'll go to the bypass button and turn off the soil click module for the next two or three days and let the sensor acclimate into the soil around it. Then we'll go back in and bring the sensor back online. So as you can see, the soil click is very easy to install and operate. But if you do encounter difficulties, it could be due to a couple of different reasons. If you notice that your plants are too dry, check your moisture settings as this could have been set too low. Also, be sure to check your sensor location as it is possible that the zone where the probe was installed is getting moisture from the current irrigation cycle. Remember, the probe must be installed within the last zone to run. On the other hand, if the plants are too wet, check the moisture level to see if it was set too high and ensure that the sensor probe was placed in a location that receives full sun. Also, check to see if the pause function was enabled and now the sensor is being bypassed. If you believe that the moisture level is incorrect, you might want to revisit the probe location to ensure that the sensor is in full contact with the soil. Also check the sensor wiring to make sure it is intact. If you notice that the moisture level is always at a maximum or minimum, there could be a problem with the sensor. If you happen to see the alarm symbol, this will be an indication that something inside the module has been damaged and you will need to replace the module. The part number is SC-MOD. -MOD. Finally, if the module display is blank, most likely this is due to a power failure. Check the connection to the controller to which the module is connected. If you need more information, consult the owner's manual or look us up at hunterindustries.com for more support. And thanks for watching.